मैं नवीन जुयाल विस्प्रिंग हिमालय इस वक्त मैं कटरा में हूँ कटरा में आने का मेरा मकसद ये था कि वाडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हिमालय जोलॉजी का एट नेशनल जियो रिसर्च मीट हुई है द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस यंग रिसर्चर जियो साइंस मीट इज टू एक्सपोज द यंग फर्टाइल माइंड ऑफ जियो साइंस रिसर्चर्स टू द फैसिनेटिंग फील्ड ऑफ हिमालय जोलॉजी the this time they they decided to organize it in katra sector uh, the simple for the simple reason that this area has got a beautiful geological sequences as you can see behind me is the sibran limestone and if you can see the white patch over there in the middle of the slope is the sri mata vishnu devi now if you come down from the peak to the uh, to the to below then you will see a kind of a rolling topography these are the tertiary uh, sediments of lower middle and upper shivalik now the lower shivalik is dominated by the clay with subordinate sand whereas the middle shivalik has got a massive sand sand body with subordinate clay and the upper shivalik contains sand and the gravels now uh, these sediments particularly the tertiary sediments of the shivaliks have their sources in the high himalaya when the himalayan orogeny was taking place the rivers emerging from the himalaya were bringing the sediments from the higher and lesser himalaya and depositing them along the um, east west axis of a trough which was created along its course uh, way back in 2010 professor uh, b c thakur and uh, professor perumal together they worked in this area of riyasi why they came in this area because in 2005 there was a massive earthquake in a, in, in muzaffarabad uh, balakot sec segment which is also known as the kashmir earthquake the earthquake was devastating area in and around muzaffarabad was leveled to the ground and according to an estimate more than 70000 people lost their life with this let us go to the field but before we go to the field i just wanted to quote some of the Uh, observations made by Thakur et al in the tectonic physics paper of 2010 according to them the mbt in this area demarcates a tectonic boundary between the tertiary sub himalayan uh, rocks and the pre tertiary lesser himalayan rocks now but there is another tectonically active fault along which the 2005 muzaffarabad earthquake occurred run south of the mbt between muzaffarabad in pakistan and riyasi jammu to bilaspur nahan in himachal pradesh now middle court and wadia designed designated this fault as main boundary fault now thakur et al in their, their 2010 paper reassigned it as a middle court wadia thrust which they call it mwt and roughly runs 700 km now this thrust has sheared the protozoic sediment limestone not only the limestone was sheared but at places the limestone overrides the shivalik sandstone and the shivalik gravels in addition to 2005 muzaffarabad earthquake according to perumal an older earthquake that was dated to around 1555 ad was also caused by the reactivation of the middle court wadia thrust viewers this is a google image insert is the little bit regional image covering from muzaffarabad in the northwest and jammu in the southeast the dotted yellow rectangle is a crude representation of the trend of the middle court wadia thrust the larger image is the area where we are going to go it is it lies in the noda khad khad means river now there are the larger circle is is the area where you will be seeing the sheared sirman limestone the smaller ellipsoidal circle is the location where you will see that the protozoic sirman limestone is overriding the shivalik gravels whereas the dashed line is a fault scarp of 1555 ad so we travel roughly around 50 km plus from katra across the riyasi town then left the vehicle and on the way we came across the gujars because a lot of gujar families are here then we got into the river which is a dry river is a monsoon fed river it has got a catchment in the sirman limestone towards the northeast um, uh, as you can see that sirman limestone is highly sheared our students had to really struggle to reach the uh, locations where the Uh, structural evidence of the reactivation of mwt are preserved 
We are now at a river called Narda. Narda is a small monsoon fed river which comes out from the outer lesser Himalaya. So I have with me Professor Mahesh Thakkar who has worked extensively in, in Gujarat, Kutch region and is a man who understands the structural configuration. So very first observation if you can see here there is a gorge. You, you can see the gorge that shows very young feature in this area. But very significant exposure over here, you can see this is a wedge-shaped limestone, which is known as the Sirban limestone. Uh, the age of this limestone is uh, Proterozoic. And this Proterozoic limestone is overriding mm. uh, the upper Siwalik uh, deposits. Mm. You can see the gravelly deposits. Mm. Somewhere you, get, you, you uh, see uh, further to the downstream, mm. the sandstones and the mudstones but it actually overrides the uh, younger formations. So this is very important uh, for the latest post siwalik activities, okay. uh, tectonic activities, and for our earthquake, mm. uh, that has actually been activated mm. uh, along this fracture zone. Right. So that is known as the uh, Medlicote Wadia Thrust. Okay. So this is the part of the, so this is the extension of the Balakot Fault. The up dip of the fault, this is what we learned in Gorkha earthquake. See, we talk about the segmentation, but when we have the fault like this, rupture comes and stops. It does not go up. So there also it remains blind. So that means parallel to the dip. Dip, dip also fall getting segmented. We only know along the strike segmentation, isn't it? Along the strike only we get segmentation. See, that's why the earthquake prediction is very critical it is not like 2 plus 2 is 4. So, in the yes. last 25 years, still activities is going on. Yes, here. The aftershock activities. Yes, yes, yes. Post-seismic. So, it is, post -seismic. Relax. So it is not actually... Uh, uh, settled down. Much, uh, settled down. Mm -hmm. And very much related to the plate boundary. Right, right, right. So, very good evening to all of you. Good evening. Today is 23-11-24. Part of an 8th NGRSM. The Wadia Institute organized the two days field workshop to expose the young intelligent mind about the active falls and false scarps. So we are on the foothills of the Vaishnava Devi range. On backside you can see the Vaishnava Devi limestone or great limestone or a Sirban limestone or Trikuta limestone. So we are on the node of fan surfaces this is the node of fan you have seen on the upstream the gravels the classed composition of this fan surfaces so we are standing above the fan surfaces on my left you can see there is a truncation of the Vaishnavi Devi gravels it's kind of on a rolled topography and topography is truncated and it started become very pretty flat and horizontal and where we are standing on the base of the scarp and there was a man-made channel has been dug to divert the waters. So we are on the scarp. This is, we refer in our paper as a scorpion fall scarp. And we have the, another fall scarp, it's a rain scarp, it's much further south of it. And we can see the chanab on the downstream, that's the major drainage system. This Noda River is a tributary of Chenar. Now, this is a beautiful scarp. Why I say it's a scarp? Because in the river valley, Noda River Valley, you have seen all the deformation features. Now, this Vaishnavi Devi gravel has been folded or a faulted. So, this is the part of the system, and this scarp is about 37 meter height and it has recorded more than three events. So this scarp may have been eroded by the surface processes. Okay, then the scarp angle or scarp geometry get modified. But not seeing one place, you cannot prove that this is in a scarp. The scarp should have the lateral extent for a quite considerable distance, having a similar strike. That's very important. This strike of the scarp is the base of the scarp or a strike of the scarp will be parallel to the master thrust which we have seen on the upstream where the Sirban limestone is overriding the upper Shivaliks. This is what we have seen. So what 
generally the paleoseismologists do they just take the strike and they place a trench perpendicular to the scar you may ask why you do trench because sometime this transverse river valley may not be perpendicular to the strike of the scar so you will be underestimating the slip component and the geometry of the scar deformation may not see very good appreciable result therefore wherever we see the scar if it is valley with having a scar exposures we don't do trenches but in order to find out the youngest event this scar has recorded 1555 earthquakes so in order to understand the youngest history of the false scar what we do in case of an a false scar is formed there may be a likely chances to form a new fans that will act as an a capping element but this is the big problem in himalayas we cannot be able to do the capping age that means pre earthquake event and post capping unit that is always missing that makes lot of uncertainty but once you establish the scar you try to see whether the scar that scar you get any kind of an, a new fan because scar is nothing but the change in the elevation there is a topography changes there you will invariably produce the fan so we always try to do trenching across that particular place where the young for fan is formed so that we can easily understand what was the upper capping limit you understand from the deformation unit you take the charcoal sample it will give some x age but that will be the earthquake age but we have to post date the event we have to bracket the event then we need to have the capping element so that's how we do this kind of an analysis in the field then we bring the traco and backo and do the trenching trenching depends on the exposure of the fault tip because you have seen the other side it is kind of an a fault propagation fold so sometime what happen the tip line of the fault will be concealed by the folded unit so you have to go in a appreciable depth so that's how we plan it once we do the trenches we do the 1 meter by 1 meter gridding and we try to document all the deformation structures so is there any questions we can discuss but after this scar there is one more scar so this whole unit composed of footwall is the uh, shwalik then that is a chenab river terrace element and we have the fan so this whole package is totally deformed and the youngest event i told you 1555 earthquake the age of the deposit is 4000 years i think i am done thank you very much professor verumal and the director wadia friends unlike my other videos this video you will find bit technical because this is aim for the young geoscience researcher in the country more so the subject is also bit difficult for me i could i tried my best whatever whatever little i could assimilate from the expert like professor perumal and professor mg tucker treat in a narrative form and before i say goodbye to you i am leaving you with few images of the field thank you very much for watching navin whispering himalaya what is the criteria for a fault deposit the field is there yeah? it's a very very uh, clear observation this particular limestone okay or the lithology which is quite different than this lithology this is the first observation okay this part is totally different so you have to identify the characteristic property of this particular unit and characteristic of this particular unit that you write it down okay here you can see kind of gravel which is uh, gravel and shingles and uh, cobble sized and angular to some angular fragments that you can write it down and where there is a contact that also you can write it down so we are trying to understand how come the protogeric limestone is underlain by the neogen shivalix and overlain by the vishnu devi gravel so this is what professor thakkar is trying to make me understand by this limestone might have hmm. uh, it's a kind of wedge okay in the in the thrust uh, hmm. uh, zone hmm. okay so hmm. this is the thrust zone there's along the thrust zones these has actually become the wedge 